The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. At that time, John said to Jesus, Teacher, we saw someone driving out demons in your name, and we tried to prevent him because he does not follow us. Jesus replied, Do not prevent him. There is no one who performs a mighty deed in my name who can at the same time speak ill of me. For whoever is not against us is for us. Anyone who gives you a cup of water to drink because you belong to Christ, amen, I say to you, will surely not lose his reward. Whoever causes one of these little ones who believe in me to sin, it would be better for him if a great millstone were put around his neck and he were thrown into the sea. If your hand causes you to sin, cut it off. It is better for you to enter into life mean with, than with two hands to go into Jehanna into the unquenchable fire. And if your foot causes you to sin, cut it off. It is better for you to enter into the life crippled than with two feet to be thrown into the Jehanna. And if your eye causes you to sin, pluck it, pluck it out. Better for you to enter into the kingdom of God with one eye than with two eyes to be thrown into Gehenna, where their worm does not die and the fire is not quenched. The Gospel of the Lord. Alleluia, 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 Alleluia. Alleluia. Dear friends, today Jesus wants to heal, heal us, and uh, he always does so with his word and with the sacrament. And uh, for this reason, the church put in our mouths this great uh, uh, sentence that we have proclaimed with uh, a song, the law of the Lord give joy to the heart. Okay? The Lord wants uh, to give joy to your heart through this word. Okay? And uh, uh, he, will, he wants to heal you. And uh, remember, remember that we suffer a uh, um, disease that is, is the disease of our ego or of our eye. There is a sickness that originates from the affirmation of our ego. For example, when we feel like uh, we are someone, okay, do you remember the bishop yesterday said to Ricardo, pay attention you will enter uh, in the sanctuary to serve, not to take uh, a position of privilege, okay? And uh, when we uh, feel like we are someone or possess something, we can become jealous of what we are and what we have. And uh, uh, could happen that uh, we want to preserve it, what we have, what we are. And Moses, in the first reading, responded to Joshua, who wanted to prevent Eldad and Medad from prophesying. And uh, Moses said, are you jealous for my sake? And similarly, in the gospel, the disciples are jealous because someone outside of their group is casting out demons. 
<laughs> and uh, pay attention. That is John, the loved disciple, to make this reproach and to and the, to give these words these words to uh, Jesus. And so, if John, the saint, has that problem of the ego, so probably also I I have this problem, and I have to uh, ask to Jesus, heal me today. To through this word, because uh, uh, this, is the pro this is the problem of those who consider Christianity as something to be placed in exclusive clubs. If, uh, and uh, the, uh, John says, teacher, we saw someone driving out demons in your name, and we tried to prevent him because it's that he does not follow us. And uh, this can be very relevant in our communities and parishes when we stop looking at what is good and important and we start to be focused on the problem of belonging or of rules to follow, rubrics to follow, Belonging to something exclusive is very fascinating for humans like you and like me because it gives us the strength of the we. We are someone, we are something. And uh, for an isolated I, this belonging redeems us from the fear of feeling lost in the world that is too big for us. And for this reason, knowing us, Jesus wants to intervene. And intervenes, he intervenes in our situation. He doesn't want this kind of jealousy or uh, sectorism. We must understand that preventing a good action because someone is not one of us is contrary to the Lord's will. Having this mentality that only the perfect can act, or rather, those who are recognized by us, is contrary to the Holy Spirit. Why? Because the Holy Spirit is love. What is love is always for communion, not for exclusion, but is for inclusion. Amen? The Holy Spirit, we have always to remember that, is central to our interior life and to the church's life. So we have to leave him act as he wants. Also, when he wants to go out of our schemes and use the last one, the youngest, okay? It, it happens that some very young people like Ricardo comes, okay? And uh, he is more stronger than me and preach better than me. And uh, I have to leave the Holy Spirit to use him for this community, not to prevent him because I am jealous. Amen? So help me to not become jealous. Jesus Christ's logic is to go and seek the lost sheep to include it, to find it, and uh, to bring these sheep back to the Father. And we have to share this mentality, <laughs> not the mentality that uh, uh, I have done that, so please recognize me, <laughs> okay? So Jesus is uh, asking to me and to you, do you really want, it, want to exclude the others? Do you really want to do this thing called 
scandal, say no. <laughs> uh, Jesus speaks of scandal to describe this attitude that creates oppositions, divisions, and separates those who have those who have something from those who don't. Everything that tends to exclude, I repeat it, is probably not inspired by God. Jesus says, pay attention to these strong words of Jesus. Rather than excluding someone from this church, from this community, pluck out an eye. Rather than take some, taking someone and telling them, you are not one of us, you cannot stay with us, cut off a hand. Rather than going down to the, the road that leads people to feel alienated from salvation, cut off a foot. It's better to take a millstone and tie it around your neck and throw yourself into the sea than to create division and exclusion because the church is made for the opposite, for fellowship and communion. And thank you for being like that, like yesterday. We experienced a lot of communion also to prepare this church. And truly, you are great collab collaborators. Thank you. But I have to say strongly that if we cause division, separation, and exclusion, uh, we are not following the gospel. That exclusive, elitist, I had better die. Throw it into the waters of your baptism. Throw it away. Amen? It's about uh, thinking, reasoning, and remembering that every brother and sister are so precious to us and to the heart of Jesus. And Jesus gave his whole body on the cross out of love for that brother. To say to us, I want communion, he cut his body. And he is the great example of communion for us to overcome our sin. He left himself be cut, food, eyes, and uh, uh, hands. Never, uh, so. Please never indulge in exclusive, fascist, or sectarian attitudes. Always allow yourself to be led back to the communion by the Holy Spirit. Always say to your heart, come Holy Spirit and bring communion. Take away the jealousy and bring this attitude of inclusion. Always include. We can repeat, always include. Everyone should be allowed to do the best that they can with the strength that they have, with the history that uh, we have. Because sometimes people don't uh, choose uh, uh, their history, but we have to accompany them to do that little good that they can give to the community. I invite you so to create an oasis, an inclusive community, not because it cannot distinguish between good and evil, but because it welcomes the good when it presents itself without suffocating people with rules or elitist attitudes. May our community be inclusive for all those who can take even a very small step so that by walking together we may become perfect even to the point of giving up our lives for uh, our weaker brothers and sisters 
as Jesus taught us. Remember, the communion is much more important that, than the reason.